that is uh okay here we go <coughs> all right inequalities linear inequalities solve the following inequality graph the solution set write it in interval notation we add seven to both sides Now what do I do? I divide by negative 2. And I get x is awesome. x is greater than negative 8. So what we learned is that if you multiply or divide both sides by negative, what must you do? Flip the sign, okay? So keep that in mind. If you want to be able to represent this solution, it's really three ways. Number one, you express it as an inequality. Number two, express as a graph. Negative 8, open circle, arrow to the right. And finally, interval notation, negative 8, and positive infinity. So those really are your three ways to represent this solution set. Now you know how to do inequalities. I mean, the 8th graders can be tested on it later on this, this year, okay? You guys know it. You've done it before. So let's deal with the things that you might be a little bit more confused about, okay? Such as compound inequalities. Compound means more than one, so multiple pieces. So we want to solve and graph these. A conjunction is a, is an and situation. So a conjunction is able to join two inequalities together, meaning that there will be an intersection between their sets. Now when I set these up, I grab that one, so negative 9 is less than 3x minus 7. And then the next one that I grab is the 3x minus 7. less than or equal to 11. So negative 2 is less than 3x, divide by 3. Do I have to flip the sign? But I'm dividing a negative number. But I'm not dividing by a negative number, right? So that's a point of confusion that sometimes comes up. And it's okay. Inequalities confuse people. So we got x is greater than negative 2 thirds. We solve the next one. 3x is less than or equal to 18. x is less than or equal to 6. So because this is a conjunction, I would write the and statement in between them. Furthermore, as I graph it, I plot the negative 2 thirds. And I plot the 6. Open circle on the negative two thirds, close on the six, and I join them together as it's a conjunction. What would the interval notation look like? Can see bracket. So this again is the complete solution. Now I will tell you that on the test, in order to save time and make sure that you know I can get to grading them rather uh, quickly as well as I will most likely just require the uh, interval notation. If I require the uh, uh, graph as well, I'll let you know. But uh, say you forget to put the and symbol. I'm not, not going to mark that wrong, okay? Uh, we got bigger things to kind of waste our time on than that. Agreed? Okay, so the idea is um, this is an easy thing to check. I think we all are drawn to the numbers part of it, right? So you try the next one on your own. Go. This is a disjunction, so it'll be an or. Oh, uh, I, uh, another negative crept up in there. It should just be one negative in front of the 4x. I converted it from a, a 97 document to a, a you know, whatever, Microsoft 2016 Word. I don't know, whatever it is right now. Either hit the negative key or it inserted one in there. I don't know what happened. Everybody okay with that as a solution set? Now let's anticipate what could people possibly do that 
would be an easy mistake here. Okay, forget to flip the sign. Did you do that? Thank you for sharing because now we're all uh, better off from hearing somebody make a mistake. Anybody else make a mistake they want to share? Because I, I, I make one of these problems all the time. Yeah. Okay, so you drew them together. Okay, exactly. So people will draw them together. Here's another thing that I do. I, I accidentally, I put the negative 2 here and the negative 5 there. Anybody do that? Why would you, okay, why would you do that? Yeah, first of all, the negative 2 is here and the negative 5 is here, right? So, and then second of all, you're used to 5 being bigger than 2. So, so you can see how it's easy to get that messed up. Now, you guys, if I put this type of a problem on the test, this is one you want to feel for sure like you're going to get it right, right? I mean, that's one. So those are the things that you want to check within your work to make sure that you're being careful with your inequality symbols. And every year, people make small mistakes with it, okay? The second content we're going to cover today is absolute value inequalities. And then tomorrow, we get to nonlinear. And what I mean is when you see linear, everything right now is x to the first power. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to see what happens when x is not to the first power. And it's it just brain starts to hurt. Things get a little crazy. But we're smart people, so we'll work through it. So let's talk about this. If you have an absolute value less than a constant, you know that we think of this as a less than sign, right? So when you see absolute value less than a constant, how do you know whether it's going to be a conjunction or a disjunction? You look at the uh, uh, inequality sign, you say it says less than. And and reminds me it's a um, it's a conjunction. Or this, we read it as a great or. So you can see this is a great or then sign. So therefore, we know that this will be a disjunction. And this will come up within our uh, two problems so you can see how that works out. I'm assuming that uh, Ms. Nelson used that notation, right? You've seen those pieces before. That doesn't mean we don't forget them. And I will say I went through high school without knowing that. It wasn't until I taught that uh, somebody told me that as a helpful reminder. So, um, so now let's get to the interesting aspects. Absolute values and zero or absolute values and negatives are a little bit crazy. Okay, That's where things get interesting. So let's look at that first statement. Absolute value is something greater than a negative. Can an absolute value be greater than a negative? An absolute value will always make something positive, right? Is a positive greater than a negative? Is that ever not the case? So if you ever have an absolute value sign on one side and then a negative on the other and it says greater than, you know that x is equal to all real numbers. You can plug anything into that situation, it would work out, right? Let's think about the opposite situation. Suppose that you have an absolute value that says less than a negative. Can an absolute value be less than a negative? That's just stupid. If you were to actually set it up, you would actually come up with a solution. Be like, but Mr. Gens, I'm following the process. Well, processes work most of the time in mathematics, but you got to understand the logic behind them. You got to read it. Positive less than a negative, never true. No solution. Can an absolute value be less than zero? Because if you're less than zero, you are negative. So that's no solution either. Can an absolute value be less than or equal to zero? It can't be less than, but it could be equal to. So really here we would just have one solution, and that solution would be when the function is equal to zero. Can an absolute value be greater than zero? Is it always greater than zero? It will exclude one spot, won't it? It will exclude one solution. Namely, wherever the absolute value is equal to zero. And finally, 
Is an absolute value always greater than or equal to zero? Yes. So therefore, x is equal to all real numbers. So let's apply that to uh, just four problems here and try to work through these situations and anticipate what we're going to going to get. Now, the two questions that came up in previous class were, number one, how do you know when you flip the sign? Again, it's if you divide or multiply by a negative, okay? And then second of all, when can you decide whether it's going to be a conjunction or a disjunction? And the answer to that is not now. What do I have to move first? Once you have this, now is the time. So when I give you this problem on the test, some people remove the absolute value signs right away. You can't do that. You first must get rid of the 9. Once you have just the absolute values, then you can identify and start to split. So will this be a conjunction or a disjunction? Why? Great or. So disjunction it will be. I set up my two equations. 2x minus 3 is greater than 30. What is my second inequality? Less than, I think we heard a little equal sign there. That's okay. That's all right. I made a mistake. I said equation earlier when it was inequality. We all make mistakes. So, and then uh, notice how I flip the sign and I flip that number. Does that bother anybody that you flip both or are you okay with that? So you can see I have the greater than 30. So I kept it the same there. But for the second one, I flipped the sign and the value. Flip a bowl. Nope, that would be for both. And this is why. Would you guys agree that 4 is greater than 3? I'll multiply both sides by 2. 8 greater than 6. Is that statement still true? I'll multiply both sides by negative 2. Negative 8 greater than negative 6. Is that statement true? No. So that's why when you change it to a negative, you must flip that symbol and take that into account. Does that make sense? Okay, it doesn't hold true when we're practicing with those type of numbers. Okay, here we go. So we've got our two equations. I got 2x is greater than 33, and so x is greater than 16.5. These end up coming together or going apart? Going apart because it's an or, it's a disjunction, so they will go apart. So I have negative infinity to negative 13.5 union with 16.5 to infinity. That's how we join uh, two sets together is that union symbol. People ask, do we have to include the union symbol? And I say yes. And if they say it's too hard to do or too much work, I say you must be very privileged in your life then. So just do it. Okay. Uh, do B on your own. Everybody okay with negative 2 to 8? Anybody make a mistake they want to share? 
Braden? We get it. Simple mistake. Unfortunately, I have to take points off for it, right? Or take a half point, I guess. Yes. Thought the lines kept going, so you drew it like this. That's fine. Yeah. I wouldn't dock you for that. No. Now, if you said that you're then gonna uh, your interval is gonna be all real numbers because they go in both directions, then I would say no. That's fine. Got it. Any other questions there? Okay, then what do we do to solve C? Divide by 6, and uh-oh, what do I got on the other side? Zero. He's so interesting, isn't he? Just changes our lives. Reminds us of the zero product property. Reminds us of our bank account. Reminds us of a lot of things, right? <laughs> okay. So, let's think about the problem. Can an absolute value be less than zero? No. Can it be equal to zero? Yes. So we just have one solution, namely wherever x minus 5 is zero, or where x is equal to 5. And that's it. Understand the logic, okay? And so we'll try again. Can an absolute value be less than zero? No. Could it be equal to? Yes, so therefore we just change it to an equation and solve. That's it. Yeah? Okay, and then the next one, I subtract 18. I get the absolute value of 2x minus 3 is greater than negative 13. Uh-oh, I have negatives. Negative reminds me of my bank account. No. The national debt more like it, right? So might be a little bit bigger, though. Uh, so can an absolute value be greater than a negative? Yeah, all the time, right? So x is equal to all real numbers. Yeah. No, so so th these are the two triggers. These are the two triggers. Number one, if you get a zero, you got to think about it. Second of all, if you get a negative number, you got to think about it. Give, if you give me any number, say negative 100, 2 times negative 100 is negative 200. Minus 3 is negative 203. Absolute value, positive 203. No matter what you take the absolute value of, it will be positive. Hold on. If you were to graph this, what would it look like? All real numbers. Just one line. If you were to do interval, negative infinity, positive infinity. This one, if you were to graph it, just a 5 with a dot. Interval. Roster notation. Yeah, baby. All right. Negative 5. All right, here's your assignment. I cut down the assignment for previous years because you guys are super smart. You don't need all the practice. It shouldn't take you that long. It's only about 15 problems in length. <laughs> Eight problems in width. No, one problem in width. Um, and again, today's a new day, folks. If the test went well for you last time, it doesn't mean this next one's going to go great. If the test didn't go well for you last time, it doesn't mean that this next one won't either. Okay? So it's always an opportunity to start fresh, and this is a great assignment where you can uh, get some points back for that next test and really show that you uh, own your learning.